some of our generation's most popular movies, Whoa. TV shows, you. and YouTube videos all got their start in the same small building in Lower Manhattan. This is that story. I have an iPod that I bought about 18 months ago, and, and the battery is dead on. How do you get somebody to recognize that something exists in the world? Come up and meet my roommate. The kind of like beauty of like the embarrassment. I run a small film and video production company with my dear friend and business partner, Ariel Schaum. The power tool, which should definitely bring a lot more attention. Right? It really Very might not be her. conditions. Well, you know, the uh, media tends to overblow. I, I uh, make the uh, pun. Well, that, okay, I don't want to say that the media is overblowing it. Mayor Bloomberg sorry, wants I'm nervous. I can't even put it into words. Yes, I'm starting a proper daily vlog. Like many, I was first introduced to 368 Broadway during the rise of Casey Neistat's vlog. I'd religiously watch his uploads and recite his daily motivational and bootstrap messages as gospel to friends. Keep working hard and never, ever, ever, the only ever thing in life stop. That stands between you and everything you've ever wanted to is do is doing it. In life, you have two options. Never, you can do your own thing and stand out. Looking back, I was one of thousands of fans who ripped off his style with cringe-inducing vlogs and content. I think it looked pretty awesome. Look really white. 26 miles at a four pace. You have the best Halloween costume ever. Thank you so much. <laughs> Yet, that was my introduction to an entire school of New York City filmmakers. I've always wanted to know more about the building that ignited their careers. So I began my search in a cemetery in Brooklyn. Here I am, trying to find the grave of John B. Snook the man who designed and built 368 in 1880. Around, and I'm in the middle of Brooklyn. Like, it's such a weird feeling. And I cannot find the grave, but I'm trying to give another 10 minutes. The buildings on the block that 368 lies on were designed by Ivy League educated architects and other nepotism benefiting designers, except for one. 368 Broadway. After searching for hours, I finally found the grave of the man who built it. See, John B. Snook was a working class carpenter. He wasn't sent to some fancy school. Instead, he taught himself. He didn't wait for permission. He simply started creating. This attitude has defined the building. From the Neistat brothers' early and bike and home experiment creations, away to Lena Dunham's coming-of-age, close-to-home comedic films, to the It Girl Mumblecore of Greta Gerwig, the Safdie Brothers' rough vignettes of Gotham's characters, and the resourceful detective skills of the Shulman Brothers. This DIY belief is the thread that ties all of their stories together. Digging through New York City public records, other creative endeavors of 368 began to appear. In 1890, fashion designers. In 1899, an embroidery business. In 1919, publishers. Yet the real reason many know 368 began in 1986, when Diane Fink Management, for whom the School of Filmmaking is named, took Henry over. Henry Joost, who's Ariel Shulman's directing partner, set, called it the Diane Fink School, because that was our landlord that we all paid our, our checks to. But that was the gang, and it was it was cool because we started from scratch together. You know, that's something like borrowed each other's paintbrushes and pencils and hired each other for jobs, and like it was amazing. I mean, I I, I really do miss I miss that. We we're all in the same building, man, and we were all just scraping by. In the early 2000s, as Tribeca was still reeling from 9/11, a new generation of young and ambitious creatives moved into the space. 
cheap rent enticing them, a community began. The Neistat brothers lived off sneaking into Scholastic's cafeteria, determined to make a name for themselves in the film industry. While the Safties produced YouTube content and even tried their hand at stand-up comedy for their fledging red bucket films. Okay, we got a tough crowd. We got a tough crowd here. So tough, maybe I could use you as sandpaper. Sandpaper. Lena Dunham, who had begun her career with YouTube videos at Oberlin College, began to produce a host of DIY shows such as Delusional Downtown Divas. And Greta Gerwig, who had been rejected by every MFA program she applied to, began co-writing and starring in her own indie productions, including Hannah Takes the Stairs. Lastly, a third set of brothers, Shulmans, along with their partner Henry Joost, moved into the Fink dynasty. And a long list of other creatives, including museum curators and sculptors, began to expand the creative movement, where collaboration was key to success. For example, the Safdie's 2008 film, The Pleasure of Being Robbed, featured Van Nystedt and Ariel Schulm. Greta Gerwig starred in the indie classic Francis Ha, which was apparently based off the Diane Fink friend group and was produced by Oscar Boysen. Boysen began as a rookie member of Team Nystedt and was traded to Team Alara. He would go on to produce Good Time and Uncut Gems. Sam Lickenzo, a production designer, has contributed to a remarkable number of Diane Fink films. In the Fink ecosystem, styles rub off on each other. Lena Dunham's early YouTube and short film creations have the same shaky cam, New York-centered, part drama, part mockumentary style that the Safdie's Red Bucket films had. The Neistats got their start in New York working as studio assistants with Tom Sachs. Sachs' rough, handmade style rubbed off in their films and those of earlier Shulman work. Perhaps the mainstream successes that define the Diane Fink school come from the simple idea they all shared. Don't wait until you have fancy gear or big budgets. Grab a couple of your friends, go out and start creating. This not so secret ingredient enabled them to influence and shape 21st century filmmaking. Like, I feel like if I can make a movie, then really anyone can make a movie. Like, I, I'm not joking. Today, the members of the Diane Fink School have achieved what New York media elite deem as having made it. Thank you to my mom and dad and the people of Sacramento who gave me roots and wings and helped me to get where I am today. And just thank you, thank you, thank you. So, thank you very much. Um, and thanks, Amy, for the to stick with me. I thought that I was going to be a cooler customer if this ever happened, which I didn't think it would. Thank you. But perhaps a new generation is emerging, inspired by 368 Broadway, and ready to add to the do-it-yourself creative history that defines Thing the five, And everybody was getting kind of um, like getting these huge landmark things. Like Casey and I got the HBO show, and Josh, and I was way older than me. Josh and Ben, they got into camp where they feel the future film. Like, whoa. Like, what are they chanting? Um, I think they want you to get high, my brother, man. And I was like, wow. And um, yeah, just unbelievable. All that dreams, you know, dreams coming true. American stuff, you know? Yeah.